One of the most common things that someone will say in an interrogation is, I didn't do it. Welcome to the Totally Innocent Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Reichen. Come with me on a journey into the world's most famous murder cases every Wednesday on all major podcast platforms. We take a look at the mind of a killer, how they lived, where they grew up, when they got caught, and where they're at now. Are all of them guilty, or are some of them totally innocent? Ladies and gentlemen, serial listeners, fans of murder, welcome to episode four of the Totally Innocent Podcast. This week we're going to be taking a look at Kristen Gilbert, uh, dubbed the Angel of Death. Ooh, fancy. Uh, But first we do have a couple announcements. The announcements this week being uh, you can head on over to thecanceledcult.com and stay up to date on all of our latest podcasts here at Cancel Cult Productions. Uh, We upload three podcasts here at Cancel Cult Productions. Monday is... um, Collecting Dust, Tuesday is Suspiracy, and Wednesday is this one, Totally Innocent. Yesterday, we uploaded a new episode of Suspiracy, talking about uh, Avril Lavigne being replaced by a body double. Ooh, freaky. Uh, And then Mondays, we do Collecting Dust, a podcast all about hobbies, collecting, enthusiasm, uh, surrounding certain things. Uh, So you can find all of those on all major podcast platforms, or you can head on over to thecancelledcult.com. If you want to be part of the show, you want to tell me who to cover next, you want to uh, have something read on air, you can send me an email over at uh, cancelcallproductions at gmail.com. Uh, so we can do that. I was lazy, did not get the Twitter up this week like I wanted to or the Instagram. Uh, so right now you can still only find us over at Facebook, uh, over there at facebook.com backslash canceled cult or at canceled cult there on Facebook. So uh, we have that going on for us. Um, yeah, so this week we're doing Kristen Gilbert. Uh, really weird case, man. Next week we are going to be doing Judy, uh, oh, what's her name? Uh, Judy Buenano? Buenano. Buenano? I, something like that, man. I'm butchering the last name. Uh, but she, uh, was dubbed the Black Widow, and with Marvel's Black Widow movie coming out next week, I thought it only fitting, uh, that we have Black Widow uh, be our case next week. So that should be super fun. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for announcements this week. Um, if you are a fan, like I said, of collecting, you can head on over to collecting does. We are doing a giveaway right now, uh, for some collectibles, uh, in conspiracy every Tuesday on all major podcast platforms, along with this one every, uh, Wednesday. Uh, so yeah, I say we just hop on over to a little intro for Kristen Gilbert, and then hop into the case. What do you say? Let's do it. Kristen Gilbert was an American serial killer who led a double life as a nurse. Uh, She was found guilty on four murders and two attempted murders, all of which were patients at a Veterans Affair Medical Center in Northampton, Massachusetts. Her method of killing was induced cardiac arrest, uh, potentially heart attacks, uh, by being so goddamn hot that the patients would literally just keel over whenever she walked into the room. Uh, Not really. Uh, Her method involved injecting a massive amount of epinephrine, an untraceable drug uh, that she would inject into IV bags, uh, and force this heart attack slash cardiac arrest uh, and kill people. Uh, She would then take it upon herself to save the day, or not, uh, depending on what she wanted to do, what she was feeling that day. Uh, It is believed that Gilbert is responsible for 350 or more deaths. That is a lot of death. Uh, and it, it, it's it's kind of a toss-up depending on where you go. Uh, some say it's 300 or more. Some say it's 80 or more. Uh, but the general consensus that I found the most often used number was 350 or more deaths. Only four of them have been confirmed, and she was only charged on four of them. Uh, so yeah, come along. Uh, And we'll take a look at the case of Kristen Gilbert, nicknamed the Angel of Death. Hey, you made it. Congratulations. Awesome. I do want to preface this, too, by saying that uh, this episode will probably be a little bit shorter than uh, the huge. There wasn't a lot of information on Kristen Gilbert uh, comings and goings, if you will. Uh, But this is what we got, right? So let's just hop in, I say. What do you say? 
Uh, Kristen Gilbert was born in Fall River, Massachusetts on November 13th, 1967 to parents Richard and Claudia. Uh, Richard and Claudia provided a stable home for the two daughters. As far as we are aware, uh, Kristen was the oldest of the two. Dad was an electronics executive contracted by NASA to build the first iteration of the National Space Station. How freaking sweet is that? Uh, this would then lead into a project that became the International Space Station in a joint collaborative effort uh, between China, Russia, Iceland, Greenland, and Japan. That, of course, is false information, and you should not listen to that. Uh, Dad was just an electronics executive. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, mom, on the other hand, was a stay-at-home mama of two who had a side hustle as a teacher part-time. Part-time teaching gig. Nice. Uh, nothing notable to mention in her early years. It seems like the family was happy. Uh, when Kristen became a teen, however, this is where the drama started to occur. Of course, being your standard rebel teen and much like that of Casey Anthony, allegedly, if we recall back to that episode, uh, she turned from sweet young lady into a pathological liar. Uh, not only that, but she had discovered that if you could fake suicide attempts, you could actually manipulate people to do whatever you want. <laughs> Angel of fucking something, if I'm being honest. Uh, she graduated from high school in 1986 and moved on to college, Bridgewater State in Massachusetts, to be exact. Go Mariners! I don't know if that's a real team or not. Uh, however, instead of doing drugs, drinking the brewskis, and experimenting with the sex... Uh, she began to fake suicide attempts again, and the college would order her psychiatric treatments. Uh, she then decided to transfer schools in 1987. She graduated from college in 1988 and became a registered nurse. Hey, good for you. Uh, she also married one Glenn Gilbert. Glenn Gilbert that same year. Uh, her maiden name before the marriage was Kristen Heather. Uh, two first names. So who actually didn't see this coming at all? What what I'm what we're about to talk about. Uh, so yeah, there's a little bit of a little bit of background information on her younger years. So I say we hop in to the crime and the trial of Kristen Gilbert, the Angel of Death. Imagine being called the Angel of Death. Like that's your nickname, right? Like I would have been way more popular in school if my nickname was the Angel of Death on the golf course, right? Uh, a little bit different for Kristen. Okay. Kristen joined the staff of the Veteran Affairs Medical Center in Northampton in 1989. Uh, one year after graduating and becoming married to, uh, what's his name, Gilbert, right? Uh, Glenn Gilbert. Hey, Glenn. Nice to meet you. Uh, here she would become a local celebrity. She was featured in the VA Practitioner, a high-rate magazine dedicated to nursing staff and veteran affairs. That's actually real. I'm not making that one up. Uh, she was featured in this magazine in April 1990, one month before your boy's birthday. That's my birthday, May 1990. Uh, the other nurses at the hospital noticed that Kristen had a high number of death rates when she was on watch. Uh, most of the nurses, though, played it off and joked about it, calling her the angel of death. Yikes. Uh, this went on for six years, man. Six years of high death rates on watch and nobody thought, hmm, that's a little fucking goofy, huh? Six years later, in 1996, three of her nursing co-workers reported to the board their concerns about an increase in cardiac arrest-related deaths. And I don't know why I'm going to give the nurses some hot girl summer voices, but I am. Chief Doc, please. People are having fucking heart attacks. Left and right. For some reason, uh, we're missing half of our epinephrine. And back then, nobody was allergic to peanuts, meat, fruit, sun, vitamins, bread, vegetables, fucking life, or water like they are today. Uh, there was no increase in reports of allergy, reactions, or a need uh, that a severe decrease in their epi supply was occurring. It just made no sense. Uh, the angel of death was getting some heat, and she did not like this, obviously. Uh, so she did what any sane person would do in that situation, uh, and decided to call in a fucking bomb threat at the hospital. Uh, she did this in an attempt to railroad the investigation. Uh, she would then leave the hospital shortly after in the midst of the investigation and would check herself into psychiatric hospitals seven times over the course of two years, I believe, uh, each time staying between one to ten days. But for what? Was she trying to get better? Was she killing something or was killing something not what she wanted to do, but she felt like she needed to? 
the stigma of mental health is only now in the 2020s uh, beginning to break societal acceptance and need for medical attention. People are finally starting to realize and understand and people are making social media posts. People are becoming more accepting that, okay, maybe something actually is wrong and it's not just people pretending and not wanting to do things. Maybe she was ahead of her time. Maybe she wasn't. Maybe she knew something was wrong and she was trying to get some help. Uh, that got fucking deep. Uh, she was arrested in 1998 and would stand trial for only calling in the bomb threat at the hospital right away. Uh, her and her husband would also divorce in 1998. 1998, man. It's a tough year for Kristen here. Uh, she was convicted of the bomb threat crime in 1998. However, the evidence from the 1996 investigation was way too strong. Uh, when she left her job to check herself into the hospital sometime during this downward spiral, downward spiral uh, she confessed to her boyfriend at the time, which was a police officer, a VA police officer. Uh, she was having an affair and cheating on Mr. Gilbert. Uh, very sad. Uh, she literally told the man, uh, I did it. I did it. You wanted to know? I killed all those guys by injection. Yikers, dude. Crazy enough, out of the 300 plus murders or 80, depending on where you where you get your information, uh, she was thought to have committed. Uh, she was only charged with four of these. The crazy thing is that some sources believe that she was doing this injecting stuff just to bring people to the brink of death, only to bring them back and show off how totally awesome her nursing skills were. Uh, something must have snapped and it must be must have became something much more than that uh, because she just started doing it all the time to everybody. She was, of course, um, arrested, obviously. Uh, prosecutors in the case would assert that Kristen was having an affair with VA police officer Peralt. Peralt. Uh, this was the man that she had confessed to up there a little earlier. Uh, Peralt would go on to testify against Kristen, saying that she had confessed to at least one of the murders to him uh, during one of her mental breaks. The defense, however, claimed that there was a lack of evidence beyond a reasonable beyond a reasonable doubt, most likely due to the epinephrine being untraceable, lack of proof. Uh, they just couldn't determine that she was actually injecting all of these people. Uh, Kristen Gilbert was convicted on March 14th, 2001 in federal court. The jury tried to give her the death penalty. They, they, they tried, right? Massachusetts did not have the death penalty at this time. But because the crime was committed uh, on federal property, it's a hospital, a VA hospital, uh, the death penalty was on the table and they tried to give it to her. And she uh, she got away with it. God, how ironic would it be uh, the way that you were killing people by injecting would have been the way that you went out. That would have been crazy. Uh, yeah, lack of proof to determine that she was actually injecting everybody. Uh, Kristen Gilbert was convicted on March 14, 2001 in federal court. Uh, jury tried to give her the death penalty, as mentioned, uh, but the judge decided to be lenient and give her uh, life in prison without the possibility uh, of parole. Fuck it. Uh, let's tack on 20 more years for good measure. So she got life plus 20. Serve life. Seance to bring the bitch back. Uh, and then you can do a cool 20 more. Nice. Be home in time for supper. Uh, she was transferred to prison in Texas, uh, where she is now living out her days. Um, yeah. Yeah. And again, like I said, this is going to be a short episode, man. This is that that was the the crimes that she was committing. Uh, so basically, from what I was what I'm understanding, uh, one of the nurse, one of her nurse or nurse coworkers that uh, was a part of the original three that turned her in, allegedly saw Miss Kristen Gilbert go into a room one night uh, to help a patient that only needed an oral medicine. Uh, but she saw she saw Kristen Gilbert walk into the room with uh, a syringe filled with something. Didn't know what it was. Uh, she went in to treat the patient. Nobody followed her. Uh, and then later that night, the patient did, in fact, die. And it was on speculation, right? It wasn't on record or anything. But the speculation from the coworkers was that she was a good nurse. Uh, and the reason that she initially started injecting IV bags with epinephrine to induce cardiac arrest or heart attacks uh, was so she could show off how good her skills were 
uh, for fame and glory. And if that doesn't sound like a little bit of um, mental illness to me, I guess I don't know what else it would be. Um, I, I mean, is narcissism or just knowing that you're good and want other people to know it? Uh, would, would that be considered mental health? I think so. I think so. Uh, so, yes, that is the crime and the trial. Didn't, uh, like I said, man, there wasn't a ton and ton of information there, but I thought the story was interesting. So uh, we will hop on over to the next segment, which is normally where are they now? Uh, but we also don't have a lot of information going on over there either. But uh, we will hop on over to that uh, and then close it out. And here we are. You made it. We're at the end. Well, pretty much. Uh, so in the, where are we, where are they now segment? How, what are they, what are they up to in the, the good old prison, uh, system? We could not really find much on Kristen Gilbert, unfortunately. Uh, Kristen Gilbert is currently living her life sentence away, uh, in a prison in Texas. Nice. Uh, there isn't much else to say here. Not much to find on the angel of death or how, how she spends her afternoons. If she's quilting or knitting or throwing uh, karaoke dance parties like uh, with Jody Arias hanging out over there uh, getting drinks thrown on her like Casey Anthony we just don't know uh, she's keeping a low profile as far as I as far as I know you, you search up Kristen Gilbert and you find a lot about uh, the crimes a lot about what we've already mentioned there I mean that's most of the information that was portrayed in this podcast was most of the information that I could find um, but you can't find anything recent you can't find anything about what she's up to but I like to think that she's out there getting up on the mic and throwing down to some I believe I can fly uh, or something of of that nature. I need a doctor. I don't know. Uh, yeah, man, uh, this one, uh, this one is, is just it was weird, right? It was good. It was weird. Uh, actually murdering your victims, potentially 300 plus victims uh, by taking a little needle and uh just putting a little bit of liquid into an IV, an IV bag. That's crazy. And to do it because you think that you're good, right? You think that you're just an excellent nurse. You got the skills. You, you do it because of that. You, you bring people, literally guide them to the brink of death only to try to snatch them away unless you're feeling like, uh, like you just kind of want to let them go. Uh, so she kind of playing God in that aspect, in my opinion, right? Obviously, we don't know for sure. We'll never know, probably. But uh, but yeah, to me, it sounds like mental health and mental health is uh, it's a crazy thing, man. Uh, I know people that struggle with it. I struggle with it myself, depression and things like that. Uh, still wouldn't inject people with epinephrine unless they were, you know, stung by a bee or ate a peanut or something. Uh, but my wife does have some severe social anxiety. And I have to admit uh, that prior to meeting her eight years ago, um, I was kind of in the camp of it's, it's kind of just not that big of a deal. You know what I mean? Like, yes, I have, I have clinical depression. I've been diagnosed with it. Uh, I've dealt with it. Um, never done medicine. I kind of was just able to live with it, but some people are not. And watching her over the last, you know, eight years has shown me that some people just can't turn it off like that. It's not possible. Um, and I almost feel like maybe that's kind of what happened here. And like I said earlier, up and above, and yes, I was reading from a script, but I wrote that because it's, it's how I feel. Uh, maybe at the time she knew it, but back, back then in those early days, it wasn't really something that that society looked at and accepted as, okay, that's a possibility. Back then, if you were depressed or if you were bipolar or if you were crazy, uh, people would just be like, oh, you're crazy or you're lazy or you're hazy or you're daisy. I, I, I digress. I used to be a rapper. Um, but yeah, people would people would uh, would just think that you were fake and thinking that you were just trying to get attention or you were just crazy. Right. Uh, but it goes a lot deeper than that. We've, as we've seen uh, in the last, you know, however many years, it is, it's a lot deeper. Like it's, it's like those posts that you see on the internet where you see, you know, the, the iceberg might say depression, but then underneath that is like a million other things that everybody else doesn't see. And that's kind of how I look at it now. 
And I'm wondering if that's not how she saw herself back then. Uh, and that's why she had checked herself into psychiatric hospitals seven times over the course of two years, uh, staying between one and 10 days, trying to get some help. Um, maybe she knew what she was doing was wrong. Uh, maybe she couldn't stop. Maybe it was something in her brain that said, hey, you have to do this. Or maybe she just was a narcissist. Maybe maybe she thought that she was better than everybody else. And to prove it, she was going to bring people to the very edge of death where she could either bring them back or if she wanted to toss them over the edge, she could. That's, uh, that's a scary thing, right? Scary thing. Oh, yeah, so that is the, uh, that is Totally Innocent, episode four, short episode, I believe. Um, not really watching the time, just kind of chatting, but, you know, podcast be as long as a podcast needs to be, homie. Uh, and, and it is what it is. Uh, so, yeah, this was the case of Kristen Gilbert. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Next week, like I mentioned in the announcements, we are going to be doing uh, Judy Buenano, I believe is how you say it, uh, known as the Black Widow, and I don't know much about her right now. But I will for next week's episode. Uh, and I was going to do her this week, uh, giggity, but uh, realizing that Marvel's Black Widow movie was coming out July 9th, two days after, or one day after uh, the podcast normally goes live, I decided, hey, I'm going to save Black Widow uh, for Black Widow opening week. And I just thought that was kind of silly and fun, and we're just going to do it because I like to be silly and fun and just do it. So yeah, thank you guys so much for listening to Totally Innocent this week. Thank you for coming back. I know who you are. I see it. I see it. If you enjoy the podcast, consider leaving a review on Apple Podcasts or anywhere that you can leave reviews on podcasts. Uh, and yeah, thank you for being a part of Cancel Cult. Thank you for coming back each week. And I will see you next week for episode five of Totally Innocent. Take care. <laughs>